uh, Mario Woods was executed by San Francisco PD December 2nd, 2015 uh, on death certificate 4.44 p.m. Um, maybe 60 minutes prior to me getting off of work. And I was awoken with him being shot twice in the head in the driveway of our home. Well, the murder of my son, Kareem Johnson, in 2013, June, <clears throat> in June of 2013, he was murdered. So I'm here today to share my story about what, <clears throat> what it means to raise a son that believes that he will not live to see his 25th birthday. You know, I knew parents lost children all the time, and I never expected it to be me. Not because I thought I was above it, beyond it. I just never anticipated, especially that day. I didn't know that that would be the last conversation that I had with my son. Burying a child is so boring so unconventional, so all over the place. There's not a four step to it. It's all over the place. You're angry one day, you're in denial the next, in denial the next day, you're angry this day. My heart was always on mothers who had lost their children. I remember weeping for those mothers. I remember praying for those mothers. I remember crying with those mothers. And before I knew it, I too am standing with those mothers. I feel like I cannot protect my child. And I feel like no one cares. And I feel that he understands that too. And with that, he has hopelessness. He's told me, I don't think I'll live to be 25. What do you tell your child that's strong and healthy they're supposed to bury you when he says, I don't think I'll live to be a quarter of a century old. No one's done any follow-ups. No one's cared that the homicide took place where we lived. We have cameras on our light posts. What are they, what are they photographing? Why wasn't anything captured? It's been over a year, and there's still no one held accountable for my child's death. So honestly, there's a bias here. When you look at black and brown, it is shoot to kill, leave no prisoners. Even on his death certificate, they lied. And I'm gonna change the narrative now because they always take it out the interviews. They put Mario at being 5'9". Mario was 5'6". So you put on 5'9", because it sounds more menacing. And then when you see him in that position, and I have to wrestle with this, and I had to search the inner, Lord, did he feel all those bullets? I hope he didn't feel those bullets. I made a mistake of looking too closely one time. And right in the back, big plug. And I thought his beautiful head So mainly the problem for me is I have a system that I live in that is fighting to take my son's life. Have my people not yet paid the price? Have my people not yet paid the price? And the question we have to ask, can we not live in this country as humans? And who do we ask for help? Is it the mayor? 
Is it the governor? Is it the president? Who do we go to for help? We work on a family as though now we don't have one leg to maneuver around. We hear out of only one ear. We see out of only one eye. You know, you have only one limb. That's what you become as a family. When tragedy like this hits a family, it hits in so many different ways because the dynamic of a family is no longer the same. You're always saying, okay, that one is not here anymore. It's just something you have to deal with one moment. I wouldn't even say one day, because sometimes you have days where you're fine for that whole entire day. I could never get my son back. All I have left are memories and his children. And every day is a struggle. We just have to ask him to give us the strength moment by moment, day by day, years by years, because that's what we're looking at until we get to a place of acceptable rest within our hearts, within our spirits, even within our wounds. Wound. Not wound, but wound. Because for every mother that has lost a child, she know that she pushed at that moment, or she laid forth at the hour of delivery and brought a child forth, and now that child is no longer here. I was supposed to make it okay for Mario. I was supposed to have that chance to put it back together. I was supposed to make it okay. I've come to terms that I can celebrate my son anytime I want to. I celebrate his birthday. I still buy him a Christmas present. I, me and my grandchildren find the brightest star in the sky. That's daddy. He gives me signs and lets me know that he's always around me. Not to mention his oldest looks like he just spat him out. On days that's great and on other days it's very heartbreaking. I keep Kareem alive um, in more ways than one. I talk to him all the time and I would feel his presence all the time. I just know when he's around, I'm like, okay, you're here, I know. Alrighty, you know, and I just go on with each day. My son also was a donor, and knowing that he made this decision based on our conversation, it let me know that he was listening even when I thought he wasn't. Mom, you for real go give those people your insights? And I would laugh and say, son, you know they could have all of it from the uterus to the fallopian tubes. He said, no, mom, I don't think they want those. <laughs> <laughs> but I never thought he changed his mind until the day he passed away. And they, um, the donor agency was there and they told me my baby changed on his license to be a donor. I was already proud of him just for being who he was, but that really makes me extra proud to know that. And it also lets me feel like he's still walking around, just not in the flesh. Mario was that kid that, you know, I remember getting him and his brother these suede jackets from J.C. Penney. And, uh, and I remember them getting dressed up and we were going to church and I said, where's that jacket at? And he's like, mom, I had to give that jacket away to a friend of mine. He, Cause no one can give him a coat, mom. He doesn't have anyone there. That's who he was. Everybody could come to the house and, and, and he's gonna break bread. 
He just watched out for everybody that seemed like they didn't have nobody. And that's the stuff that you won't hear. And I had to make sure that you hear and you know about him. He was loved, he was somebody. I think we're all fighting in silence and, and, uh, and separate from each other. I think we really need to take it to the streets. I think we need to get to the corners of roads and cry, holding our wombs and letting people know what we feel. Because our stories will not show from this point of view on the six o'clock news. You will only hear that another one lost their lives and that's it. And then you're on to something like it's nothing or another mother is broken. Sometimes you just feel that mother's pain from the gut and all you can do is just sigh like, and you shake it off and you go on because there's you know more responsibility, more life to live, more things to do within each day. As mothers, in general, we hold a lot inside, whether it be our thoughts, you know, our qualms, our quarrels, you know, everything stays on the inside and you kind of try to ah, um, hash things out inwardly. But I'm just so grateful for this healing session that has taken place today and that will forever continue because I know that we are dynamic, we are chosen to do this project and we're gonna grow and the world is going to hear us. I won't just st lay here and take this as if it's okay. When I said in that first interview, you saw him as nothing or nobody, not loved. He was loved, he was somebody, he was cherished. You'll never know what you did to my life. They were the reason that I would get up, make it to two jobs at times just to make it work. You didn't deserve what you got that day on December 2nd, Mark. You were a beautiful soul. I love you to the moon and back. Now you don't have to worry so much. I'm always his mother. He's always my kid. I love you, love you, love you, son. From now until forever. Your absence is missed so much. Just to touch your face, to argue with you to debate with you over something that <laughs> neither one of us are right about, but we're the same sign and you're so much like your mom and I just need you to know that life hasn't been the same without you. And I know it never will be, but I will continue to make sure all four of your children know who you are and are a part of each other's life and I will continue to speak your name, and I will continue to love you now as I did when you were here. And just know, as long as our God gives me breath, I will continue to be your voice and represent you with pride. That's what I would tell my 